Welcome back to the Global Landscapes Forum 2019 here in Luxembourg, where we're discussing sustainable finance and breakthroughs in sustainable finance. It's our fourth and final GLF this year. And this evening, I have the pleasure of speaking with Tony Simons, who is the Director General for, of the World for Agroforestry Center. Tony has worked for 27 years on issues at the tropical agriculture forestry interface in more than 40 developing countries. Wow. Um, this has spanned the private sector, academia, official development assistance, and research. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So you spend a lot of time talking to business people and investors about opportunities for landscapes um, as investments. Do you have the impression that the message is getting through? Undoubtedly. Um, during the Climate Week in New York in September this year, 2019, it was clear that business was way ahead of government and civil society. The message has got through and now they're leading and they're looking for governments to catch up. They waited for the signals around climate change, they waited for some of the regulatory process to kick in and they're ahead of the curve now. They get it, they understand it. How they deal with it, the decisions that they need to take, the support that they need for project design is where the greatest interaction will come in the coming years. Okay, so as Director General of World Agroforestry, your organization's research focus is very much at the nexus of agriculture and natural systems like forests. What research from the past year or two has really caught the attention of the private sector and made an impact? So the private sector is very focused on having evidence. Evidence and analysis and tested solutions. Policy, technical, social solutions. When they have that evidence to help with decision making, when they have good data and analysis to help with project design and solutions for those, that is where they have a stronger level of engagement. That's where they see the value of research and knowledge and um, those type of typical um, pursuit of, of, of trying to elicit information from this vast amount of data that we've got. Right, right. So, so what in your opinion is the most important financial model that needs to be changed to accommodate a shift? to a more sustainable, equitable and prosperous world? Well, sadly, finance is only part of the equation. And even more sadly, we're only partially dealing with financial matters. We do not have total accounting. We're only looking at the revenue side. So we privatize the profits and socialize the costs. And whether that's in, a, in cutting down mangroves to grow shrimps, all we look at is the, the price of cutting down the mangrove forest and building the ponds and the amount of feed that we give to the to the shrimps to turn them into marketable size. We don't think about the loss of artisanal fishing grounds, the tsunami protection, the whole ecosystem functioning of that marine um, coastal environment. And so here we've got to bring in all of the negative externalities as well as the positive benefits of all of that ecosystem functioning. And if we look at at a built infrastructure, um, plant and roads and, uh, and buildings, there we, we put a lot of investment into those and over a number of years we depreciate it. When we look at natural infrastructure, we just ignore it. And if you think about the, the care, the maintenance, the insurance, the, the refurbishment that you would do on built infrastructure, why don't we do the same for natural infrastructure? we take it for granted. It is something for us to deplete and wear down, and we're running out of natural capital. Right, we are indeed. And World Agroforestry has worked with many private sector companies like Mars, including Mars and others. What, what have both sides learned from this initiative, from working together? I think um, a key part of it is understanding vocabularies and understanding motivation. And one of the things we're delighted with our private sector engagements is, is being in the room, listening to the conversations, understanding their concerns and understanding their opportunities and help them interpret them in ways that they may not have seen. We learn a tremendous amount when we look at, at what drives these companies that have a, a high regard for sustainability. What is helping them take business decisions and what makes a business case? And where we can bring in evidence, where we can bring in independent advice, where we can bring in um, solutions that make sense to viable projects, we benefit from it and the companies benefit from it. And the, the opportunity to, to blend you know, public finance and that private sector finance is very important 
particularly if it's not focused on the finance. It's focused on the outcome. It's performance-based. Okay. And so perhaps we need to change the term from, from blended finance to, to blended development. Right, I hear you. All right, so this is our last um, GLF for, the, for this year, and uh, you know, we focused on finance. What, what do you see happening next year? <laughs> what do you hope to see, I guess? Well, the Global Landscape Forum team has done a remarkable job this year in terms of raising the profile of landscapes, bringing in a lot of the language around nature-based solutions, and through partners like the World Bank and UNEP have brought in the whole upcoming decade on ecological restoration. This right. is fundamental to the landscape approaches we've been discussing in the four meetings this year and also in, in past years. Mm -hmm. So 2020 is, is, a, is, an, <coughs> is an amazing year for environment, for nature, for the world and for climate change for us to step up to the Paris obligations in Glasgow at the end of the year for those new um, promises, the new, new pledges. And we were speaking with the Minister of Environment here today in Luxembourg and, and she was very taken with the idea that actually a naturally determined contribution should be a combination of the government determined contribution mm -hmm. and individuals determined contribution. What, will, what do the Luxembourg people want to do to change their own lifestyles rather than thinking about, well, that's a job for government to do, that's a negotiation, mm. for people to take personal control of that. Also, we have the um, uh, replacement of the Aichi 2020 targets when we meet in Kunming in October with the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity. And relating biodiversity loss and biodiversity fragility to the issues around climate change is, is fundamental to the way that we go forward. When we think about natural capital, when we think about biodiversity, when we think about the, the ability of, of the planet to, to, to sustain us, it's really important that we think the planet Earth is not in problem. You know, they, it's not in danger. It's humans that are in danger. Right. And when we think about the connection with forests and we think about the ecosystem services that we get from natural systems, that's where we've got to pay much more attention. We undervalue it, we underappreciate it, and we really need to raise the understanding and the action and the investment that hopefully follow. And when we have a group of 400 bankers and investors staying until 6.30 on a Saturday night in Luxembourg, it's remarkable. And the online viewers that have joined this Global Landscape Forum. So lastly, I'd like to really congratulate the Global Landscape Forum team because they've done a, an amazing job raising the profile and through your, people like yourselves as well of passing on the message. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you having um, a conversation with us and telling us how GLF has been going. Thanks a lot, Tony. Cheers. Thank you.